This week, Hobie Outdoor Adventures takes you to Virginia for winter fishing in the James River. We'll be chasing the elusive muskie of North America. Muskies are one of the smartest and toughest fish to catch. It's why anglers call them the fish of 10,000 casts. Morgan has been fishing for his entire life, but has never experienced musky fishing. So he flew from California to Lynchburg, Virginia in the middle of winter to meet up with his friend, Christine Fisher, a musky fanatic who's always on the water looking for one. So Morgan reached out and uh, wanted to do a Hobie Outdoor Adventures and asked me, you know, kind of what I was thinking for this. And I know when I said, Morgan, I want to do a musky show. Like this is my bread and butter. This is what I'm passionate about. It accurately paints a picture of who I am and why I do this. I knew I was kind of going out on a limb trying to, uh, to get him to commit to a musky show, but I had confidence in this area and confidence what we could do. And I, I think it could turn out really cool. Christine is an amazing angler. She fishes mostly freshwater for bass and pretty much anything that swims in rivers or lakes. Uh, she gets on that Hobie Pro Angler 360, covers a lot of water, and catches a lot of awesome fish. So I'm really excited to get out there with her to try to target a muskie for my first time. I know I'm going to learn a lot. I don't expect to necessarily catch one because they are very difficult and people fish for years to catch their first muskie. But maybe I'll get a little bit lucky and get one in the kayak. As a muskie angler, I've had a lot of unsuccessful days, but I've also had a handful of absolutely magical days. There was a day on St. Clair where I had about a two and a half hour window. The weather was so bad and I caught five muskie in two hours, um, including a 48, a 47, like a 45 and a, a 42 and a low 40s fish. And they were T-boning giant swim baits. And it was absolutely awesome. I stuck it out for as long as I could and it, I was rewarded with the most remarkable day of musky fishing that I've ever had. Driving from the airport to where we're staying was amazing. You're going through these windy mountain roads. There's still snow on the ground. You open your window and it feels fresh out there. So I'm ready to go fishing. We got here the first night and it's Monday, everything's closed in the town that we're staying in, so we finally find a bar that has some food. It's late at night. The second that I walk through those smoky doors, my eyes instantly drift over to this work of art on the wall that consisted of like a 1940s Chevy pickup, giant American flag, and our America's bird, the eagle, above, and I, I knew I had to have it. If that is not a good luck musky charm, I don't know what is. And before we know it, we're cutting a deal, paying cash for this awesome American beauty of a painting. Christine sets it up in her hotel room and it's kind of like, I don't know, worshiping the shrine, the American flag shrine before we go musky fishing. Christine's pretty adamant about her rituals. There's a kind of a theme to musky fishing and that may involve not showering for days or spending hundreds of hours casting. And it's kind of fun, you know, there's almost like a musky lifestyle. And part of that is getting a cup of gas station coffee in the morning, getting some snacks and getting out there on the water. I really don't know much about musky fishing, but we have Sam from Blue Ridge Musky and I know that I'm in good hands. We have Christine who's experienced, she's caught plenty of musky. So this is gonna be a great learning experience for me. And I know that between these two, they're gonna give me a good shot at catching a fish. So river conditions this week, 
Currently, we're experiencing higher than normal levels. So the game plan for this week is gonna be targeting eddies and banks. But with the high water, it's gonna push a lot of the fish to the banks and the eddies. They don't wanna hang out in that current all day. Uh, so we're gonna be throwing big rubber. We're gonna be throwing swim baits, maybe some jigs. Uh, kind of get an idea of what the fish are gonna be eating and go from there. It's cold. I'm putting on those nitrile gloves to keep the water off my hands, but I'm ready. I'm excited. We, get, we rigged the kayaks up. We have the Railblazer uh, camera mounts on there with all the GoPros and stuff set. All we need now is a big bite. Well, coming up, the search for the elusive muskie begins. Hobie Outdoor Adventures will be right back after these messages. Hobie Outdoor Adventures is brought to you by Gerber. Gerber Fishing Gear, Fish Beyond, Lorenz, Find, Navigate, Dominate, Daiwa, Advancing the Sport of Fishing, and by PowerPole Micro Anchor, Swift, Silent, Secure, and Small. Welcome back to Hobie Outdoor Adventures. We're fishing on the Upper James River in the Blue Ridge Mountains area for one of the toughest fish to catch. And on top of that, this is the first time Morgan will go after the elusive muskie of North America. Christine was showing me some of the big rubber, they call it, which are the giant baits that they use for catching muskie. There's uh, jerk baits, uh, crank baits, all of these beautiful custom lures. and. It's kind of intimidating when you have one attached to your line because someone's handing you a 50 plus dollar bait that could be a pretty rare bait. It's a little bit intimidating, you know, you gotta get that lure in the right place to trigger those strikes. But at the same time, I'm a little nervous about losing one of Sam or Christine's expensive lures. Checking out the river for the first time, talking with Sam, we're gonna hit a big pool which is up river. And Sam has a jet drive on his river boat Getting onto the river, going through a few inches of water with that jet drive is just fun already, you know? And it's a beautiful setting, very, very peaceful and quiet. I just can't wait to get out there and start hucking those big baits. Back in the saddle. We're kind of drifting down the river here, looking for holes on the Lowrance. Uh, there's a couple holes here that I've found that are 12, 14 feet deep. So what I'm doing is just using the Mirage Drive 360 to hold myself in the current, and I'm slowly just hopping this jig along. Let's see how these giant, giant baits cast. Make sure my settings right on my Lexa. I'm used to casting yellowtail lures with this thing. But Daiwa Lexa right here is a perfect piece of equipment for hucking, hucking these big baits. So when you have a fish follow to the boat, we do a technique called the figure eight. And that's where the angler sticks his rod down in the water and draws a big oval or figure eight right next to the boat. As the fish is following in, you're showing the side profile of your bait to that muskie. And their preferred way to strike a bait or a natural bait fish is called T-boning. They wanna grab that thing right in the middle from the side. That gives them the best grip on the fish. It allows them to kill the fish before eating it later. It's been a while since I've fished on a river and I don't really know what to expect. Safety is one thing that's going through my mind, you know, wearing the right gear in case you fall in the water, which is freezing. Hypothermia is a real thing. Wearing a life jacket the entire time. I'm confident we're going to be good and safe, but I know Christine, fish are number one to her. So there might be some risks we're going to take to get to the right areas to catch those fish. A lot of anglers, you guys, um, have this idea that Hobie kayaks just aren't compatible with river fishing. And that couldn't be further from the truth. My PA 14 360 is hands down the all time river boat. I'm able to hands free hold myself along a current seam and fish an eddy, you know, where these fish are staging. And I couldn't do that with a paddle. These drives allow you to maneuver around the current. Um, Hobie just came out with the kick-up fins, and that is something that every angler can appreciate. When you're coasting down the river and you've got a lot of rocks and fast-moving water, these fins literally break away, 
completely clearing the bottom of any obstruction and then immediately re-engage and you're back fishing again. So that right there is gonna allow you to fish all day and your drive is gonna be manageable. It's about 11.30 and we've been casting a lot. We've been spending a lot of time covering a lot of water and we are just not seeing anything. And I'm kind of starting to scratch my head and go like, okay, is this normal? Are we gonna fish 12 hours and make 10,000 casts and not even see one? Because for a lot of people, just seeing one or, or getting one to follow that bait up to the kayak is a success. So we're casting and I kind of see Christine and it looks like she's snagged the bottom or something. And then all of a sudden I see like the line pop and then there's kind of a weight to it and she's reeling up and I can tell she's confused. Was it a muskie or something else? We'll find out. Hobie Outdoor Adventures will be right back after the break. Welcome back to Hobie Outdoor Adventures. Morgan and Christine are muskie fishing on the James River in the Blue Ridge Mountains area. They haven't seen a lot of action this morning. Typically, it takes a while for the water to warm up and the muskies to start getting more active. So I was fishing a big Poseidon, 12-inch Poseidon, and my bait hung up in a lay down. So I kicked over there to pop that bait out. And as soon as I popped it out, there was immediate pressure on my line. There was no movement. It was almost dead weight. And I was like, oh, I ca I'd caught a piece of driftwood earlier in the day, and it felt exactly like what was going on. Christine's got one. You thought you thought that was a rock, huh? Oh my god, cool. I got a muskie. Yay! <laughs> the fish did not fight at all. It's probably like a maybe a four, it might bump 40. <laughs> I mean two, I'll take it. Like I was not, that was I've never had that happen. Well, I had a girl, Christine. Okay, first fish in the boat. Got a nice, that's probably like upper 30s size fish. Good color to it. That's what that fish ate. Like I said, snagged up in one of the laydowns out there in like 18 foot of water and went to pop it back out and then felt like something just stuck it and it was just dead weight. Fish did not even fight a little bit. So Christine got our first fish in the bag for today. And one thing that I do with all the fish we catch is uh, I work with our game department, Virginia Department of Wildlife, and uh, we tag these fish. So this fish right here probably already has a tag in it. I kind of recognize her. Uh, we're gonna check for that now. And if she doesn't have a tag, we'll tag her with a fresh pit tag, get her measurement, get a sex, and uh, send her on her way. D688DCE. So I can look up in my uh, spreadsheet and I can tell you when I caught this fish, how big it was, how long ago it was. All right, ready? Good work. Nice. Let's get another one. Yep. Okay, so since Christine caught that fish on a light colored bait. Sam is getting me something new. We're gonna switch out from this awesome, beautiful lure to this one. Is that a Shadzilla? Oh, Shadzilla. What do you think about that, Morg? The name says it all. Shadzilla catches muskiezilla. So we talk about the gear a lot when we're talking about musky fishing, having the right net and the tools and everything like that. But what we also have to remember is having the right eyewear is huge. Hobie Eyewear has a Sightmaster lens. And so when we have these real drizzly overcast conditions, those Sightmaster lens help brighten up the water. And when you're musky fishing, being able to see is imperative. You don't see that fish, you're not gonna connect with that fish. Crouching tiger. Ah! Why didn't you figure out that? I got bumped twice. Cause my bait was fouled up. Oh! To even see a fish, to move a muskie when you're out on the river, especially in the winter, can be really tough. These fish are notorious for giving anglers multiple days of no action. So even though I was pretty happy that I had my fish in the boat, 
I really, really wanted Morgan to experience this because I knew if he didn't, he'd probably never do it again. So I, I was hoping so badly that we could get Morgan his first muskie. The casting continues. Well, the sun is starting to come down and Morgan's chance to catch his first muskie is fading away. We'll find out what happens next. Stay tuned. Hobie Outdoor Adventures has been brought to you by Railblazer. Hold everything with Railblazer. Hobie Eyewear. See life easy. Aftco, American Fishing Tackle Company. And by St. Croix Rod, the best rod on earth. Welcome back to Hobie Outdoor Adventures. We're in Virginia searching for the elusive muskie in the upper James River. Morgan and Christine try everything. They change locations. They switch baits. They change techniques. But nothing seems to work. I'm starting to wonder at this point if I'm going to have a shot at landing one of these things. And we've been on the water now for at least eight hours, made a lot of casts. But moving downstream to a new hole, Christine and I got to have some fun. We ran down some little rapids, you know, you can't get too crazy on a Hobie with a Mirage Drive. It's not a whitewater boat. So going down like a class three rapid is not an option. But these rapids were calm enough, the river was deep enough for us to feel comfortable, to have some All fun right. and just kind of getting that flow of the river behind you and those sections where it gets shallow and you just kind of start going fast, it's exhilarating. It's almost like you're on a ride at Disneyland or something. It was really fun. So we get a lay of the land from Sam, you know, he's fished these holes. He knows every location where a big muskie might be hiding out. And there's a hole right there, there's kind of a sandbar, and then it drops off. So I was thinking to myself, okay, that sounds like a perfect location for a big muskie to be laying up. So I'm ready to keep casting. And first cast, second cast, you know, I'm kind of feeling the edge of that sandbar drop off into a deeper hole and I make my third cast. Got one. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Ooh, it's big! Oh, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming! Woo! I got one! <laughs> Get my rod right out of the way. Ooh, it's, it's large. <laughs> oh, Morgan's a giant. Got him! Oh, yeah! it's a giant! <laughs> <laughs> Shadzilla, baby, Shadzilla! Dude, Sam, that's a fat fish. That's a large one. Oh, yes it is. Booyah! <sighs> oh, that was awesome. <laughs> I felt it like tap the bottom a couple times and it was like ding ding, and then just my line took off. Oh my God, Sam, that's a, that's a big fish. It's bite time, girl, it's bite time. <sighs> that's, it's a giant, oh, 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 Sam. Gosh. Like Morgan. Wow. Boom. <laughs> Booyah. What do you think, Morg? <laughs> I'm stoked. Awesome fish. Dude, Morgan, this fish might go 50 inches. No, like if he gets a 50 on his first time, Sam, you know it's not even cool. <laughs> it's it's I told it's you I need probably 49 or 50. You did say I you needed, needed some beginner's luck. It's crazy. You sit out here and you cast and you cast and you cast, and then all of a sudden, boom. That's what you do that for. Yeah, I now that I see. Right there. And so what just, I'm doing here is <laughs> so <cut> cool. <laughs> Oh, uh, that used to be a shad though. I might have to keep that one if it's too mangled to ever fish again. But if it's still good, then we'll keep fishing it. C zero one four one D eight. Yeah, it's a cleaner hold. That's a big fish. Oh Holy God. cow! Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. What a first fish, dude. I know, I'm so stoked. That is incredible. Yeah. She's a beauty. Look at Sam's arm shaking. It's heavy. <laughs> this is a 40 pound fish all yeah. day. Wow. That fish is healthy. She is gorgeous. River monster right oh, there. Day. Look at that thing. Yeah, that's it. Wow. Should we put her back in there for a bit? Yeah. 50 and a half. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Beginner's luck, huh? First fucking muskie. <laughs> 50 and a that half. That beats my oh kayak, my baby. <laughs> Woo. Wow. 
<laughs> wow, she is gorgeous. In the water. Wow. wow, 50 and a half inches, I cannot believe it. I mean, that is a fish of a lifetime. And everyone that I've told so far, the fact that I had caught that fish of a lifetime hit me, they're like, you should quit now. Just quit, don't, don't cast because it's all downhill from here. Our trip on the James River was an absolute success. Um, we got to welcome Morgan, not only to his first muskie, but into the 50 Club. And that is something that most musky guys don't get to say. Um, it was a huge deal. Capturing a 50 and a half inch marvelous river specimen on camera in the kayaks is absolutely incredible. I caught a 40 inch male, two musky, one giant of a musky. It was an absolute, and a painting that I get to have now for the rest of my life. Absolute success. Thanks for watching and see you next time on Hobie Outdoor Adventures. <laughs> the sound of an eagle. Can you make yeah. the sound of an eagle? Hold on, I gotta get. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> nope, that wasn't good enough. <laughs> That's for you. They talk to me on the rivers. <laughs>